The following contains footage of an M-rated game. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, I'm Tai G2, I bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and today I'm here to introduce a new segment known as Versus. Basically the point of this segment is to take two games with similar qualities and compare them. A few things I should probably note is that there needs to be something between the two games that provides grounds for me to compare them. I'm not going to compare Dance Dance Revolution to Slender because there's nothing to compare. They're two different games. In some cases I'll compare the two games as a whole, and say which one I find to be better. In fact I may end up doing that with GTA 3 vs GTA 4 as well as GTA San Andreas vs GTA 5. But for today's case, I'm going to be focusing on a specific aspect between these two games. The story of Half-Life 2 vs the story of Portal 2. Another thing I want to state before I begin, is that while I will be looking at these things as objectively as possible, these are still my opinions, and you're free to disagree with them. As long as you're not being a jerk about it, and preferably give your own objective reasons. One last thing I want to say is that since today's topic is storytelling, there are going to be some spoilers ahead, so if you haven't played the games, it might be beneficial to do so. Without further ado, let's get started. In my Half-Life 2 review, I said that it was difficult for me to say how well they were utilizing storytelling since it used a unique style that I wasn't very familiar with. After playing Portal 2, I now have something to compare it to. In fact, both games seem very similar in terms of how they complemented their predecessors. Both Half-Life and Portal had very simple and straightforward stories. Half-Life was simply about escaping, and Portal wasn't too different other than the fact that you had a robot voice talking to you the whole time. Vital testing apparatus destroyed. Half-Life 2 on the other hand had a much more complex story which involved things like an oppressive dictatorship government with you helping out the rebellion against it. And Portal 2 gave a bit more insight into the backstory of Aperture Science. And overall, I have to say that Portal 2 handles its storytelling a lot better. Now keep in mind we're talking about the story here, not the gameplay or either of the games as a whole. So why do I think Portal 2 tells its story better? The reasons are actually really simple, one of them being Simplicity. With Half-Life 2, it was somewhat difficult to tell what was going on, which is why I felt the need to state that the Combine were, in fact, the bad guys. Part of the problem with this is that while I can tell that they're not on my side, it doesn't make it clear that they're not simply doing their jobs. With the Marines in the first game, it's clear what's going on. You see them killing one of your scientist friends. And since the Marines are a real armed force, that gives the indication that if they're not on your side, then it's probably because either you're the villain, or part of something the government wants to cover up. But with the Combine, it's not that simple. Since they're a completely new group of enforcers, it doesn't immediately signal that they're good or bad when they're trying to keep you from going somewhere you shouldn't be. Another thing is that City 17 is supposed to be like the novel 1984 where it's a prison state and information is sort of kept away from the public. The problem with this is, again, it's not really made clear that this is the case. The only indicators are the giant TV spewing propaganda and the guards being a little bit too eager to keep you in line. But the things Dr. Breen says aren't exactly clear indicators that there's anything suspicious about the city. All he really says are things like, we should ignore instincts, which doesn't really sound oppressive. So why does this work better in Portal? Well, for one thing, clarity. In the first game, Glaus doesn't make it clear that she's out to get you right away, but it works because this ambiguity gives a sense of skepticism towards her. And when you're supposed to think of her as the villain, it makes it apparent to you by showing that she has no qualms with burying you alive. Another example of the game's clarity is when Wheatley takes over. After you take down GLaDOS for the second time, he decides to take over the facility, and at first it seems like this is his happy ending for helping you. That is, until his betrayal. He immediately accuses you of doing nothing while he does all the work, even though that is clearly not the case, and he takes over the facility. And because he refuses to let you go, it's clear that he's supposed to be the antagonist. 
With Dr. Breen, I didn't even realize he was supposed to be the villain until about halfway through, and that's only because of the screens of him telling people that they need to capture Gordon. Granted, there could be something within the exposition the other characters give you, but that brings me to my next point. Show, don't tell. Like I said, when Wheelie takes over, he casts you aside, so you see why you're supposed to be against him. To their credit, it is harder to convey something like this for a character like Dr. Breen, since he's supposed to think that he's in the right, and he's not an idiot. He thinks that he's doing the right thing by trying to sacrifice freedom for their continued survival. But if you're going for that, then there does need to be some indication of why the Resistance is right to try and stop him. Maybe you show him torturing someone who tried to oppose him. This brings me to my next point, the characters. Despite only having three characters, I feel like Portal's characters stand out the strongest. In my last review, I told you that I might tell you about what made Wheatley so unique and interesting, and now I'm going to. He starts off as just a random robotic sphere that follows you around occasionally. He helps you out, and you somewhat start to form a connection to him. He does seem loyal and true. That is until, like I mentioned before, he betrays you. After he takes over the facility, Klaus reveals that he was apparently created to be an idiot in order to dampen her intelligence. He's shown to be very upset over this, and nearing the final showdown he tries to feign intelligence. Wow, good, good, finally, a nemesis worthy of my vast intellect. And since we know that he's not supposed to be smart, it makes his statement about you doing nothing and forcing him to do all the work sound less malicious since it was made due to a lack of perception as opposed to simply spite. All of this sets him up as a very sympathetic character. But despite all this, it doesn't take away from the fact that you wanted to throw him, because screw him! You rigged the facility to throw away perfectly working turrets and replace them with crappy ones. You turned off the neurotoxin. You took down GLaDOS and put him in charge. And after all that, he has the audacity to say he did all the work? So while it makes us feel sad for him, it doesn't make us feel bad for him. Since he could have easily let you go free. As for GLaDOS, she later ends up joining you as a potato and we get a bit of backstory for her about what happened when she was human. And she ends up becoming somewhat of a foil for Wheatley, her intelligence contrasting his stupidity, and it's also somewhat satisfying seeing her put in this situation after she tried to kill you and all. They also utilize the plot point that Wheatley's an idiot for laughs a few times. Thanks. All we had to do was pull that lever. What? Well, well no, you pressed the- <laughs> But he actually does make a surprisingly competent villain, such as how he uses the mistakes GLaDOS made from the last game to better prepare himself for the final showdown. Granted, he still loses, but you do have to give him credit for being able to think out a situation as well as he did. As for GLaDOS, you do come to experience a sense of camaraderie and trust for her, which is surprising considering the history you have with her. Granted, you are still somewhat hesitant to believe her, but you do want to trust her. And lastly, there's Cave Johnson, who exists solely through recorded messages. There's sort of a running gag with his utter disregard for human life. For this next test, we put nanoparticles in the gel. In layman's terms, that's a billion little gizmos that are going to travel into your bloodstream and pump experimental genes and RNA molecules and so forth into your tumors. Now, maybe you don't have any tumors. Well, don't worry. If you sat on a folding chair in the lobby and weren't wearing lead underpants, we took care of that too. So now let's go over some of Half-Life 2's characters. We have Alex, who's Gordon Freeman's possible Dr. love interest, Freeman, her father, some other side characters, and Dr. Breen. Did you realize your contract I have a confession to make. Player? I haven't actually played episode 1 or 2, so if anything I say in this video contradicts with those installments, that's probably why. But in any case, while I imagine a lot of people are going to disagree with me here, I didn't really find the other characters that interesting. The reason for this is simple. They don't really interact with you that much. They interact with each other for a bit, but for the most part, you're just standing around and observing. One of the few exceptions is when you're playing fetch with Dog and Alex. 
And then my Half-Life 2 review, you may recall that one of my problems with it was how it had segments where you shot at things and segments where they spewed exposition. What works with Portal is how well paced it is. Like I said, the puzzles are challenging, but aren't over encumbering. So you're still able to retain information between moments of exposition. In addition to that is how they don't immediately halt the game just to spew exposition. When GLaDOS and or Wheatley are speaking to you, you're usually still working on a puzzle or running away from something, and since it's not forcing you to sit around waiting, you're more likely to take in the information. And while there is a sense of urgency in trying to escape, it doesn't force you to think too much, so it doesn't distract from the dialogue. Last thing I want to talk about is the climax. Both of these games have really good climaxes, but for largely different reasons. With Half-Life 2, it's more of a fun climax, which I personally prefer from a game's perspective. It starts after you have all of your weapons confiscated and you're given the immensely overpowered gravity gun, so you get to have fun wrecking stuff. As for Portal 2, it's a bit better in the storytelling perspective, and even though I mostly prefer gameplay to story, I felt both of these games were decent games made great due to the stories they're telling. Basically, Portal 2 is a culmination of the things I mentioned earlier. Since Wheatley betrayed you, you're more than anxious to take your revenge on him. And eventually you do take him down, which results in a surprisingly bittersweet ending of you being released and him being stuck in space. I wish I could take it all back. I honestly do. I honestly do wish I could take it all back. And you actually do feel sad for him. Sure he screwed up, but it isn't entirely his fault. He just became mad with power. In conclusion, I think I've made it quite apparent that I prefer Portal 2's manner of storytelling over Half-Life 2's. Is there a reason I think they handled it so well? I think a large part of it is that Portal 2's story is a lot simpler. It largely boils down to, you're in an abandoned laboratory and you're trying to escape. With Half-Life 2, it starts after you've already escaped the abandoned facility, and the story is a lot more convoluted. With the aliens and the prison state, it's kind of a mess. That's not to say you can't have a story be complex, it's just that when you do, you have to put forth a lot of effort in making sure everything is conveyed and makes sense. Well, I've done my rambling for the day. What do you guys think? Do you think there's something I'm not giving Half-Life 2 credit for? Is there anything you think I'm overselling with Portal 2? In either case, be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. But remember to stay civil about it. See ya! Laughing under the circumstances, I've been shockingly nice. You want your free.